So number one is choice. So last week, uh, we really springboarded from this verse uh, in Proverbs uh, 18, 22. It says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. So I mentioned that, um, you know, a, um, a man can, needs to find a wife. So it's something that he has to seek and work at doing in order to find this woman. And the Bible also says, whoso findeth a wife. So it doesn't say, say whoso findeth the wife as though there is just one option that God has prepared and we somehow have to find out who that person is. But we have to find a wife. There is um, a few options that you might have in your life and you have to end up choosing who you want to marry. So that's my first point. My first point is, as a man, you must choose your wife. You need to choose uh, who you want to marry. So marriage is a choice and it's a choice, it's a decision that you have to make, right? Who you marry is a decision that you have to make. Nobody's going to make that decision for you. Do you know what I mean? As a man, you know, you have to decide who you want to marry. Um, God is not going to, you know, speak out of a cloud and tell you, you know, this is the person you're going to marry. He's left that choice up to you. Uh, let's go to Genesis 2 and just see this principle from the very beginning when uh, God created man, you remember, in, in the Garden of Eden. And look at what God says to man here. He says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So we see here at the beginning the principle that when God created man, he gave man a free will. He gave man free will and said, of all the trees of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So we have a free choice to eat whatever tree of the garden that we wanted. But he set boundaries, didn't he? In verse 17 he says, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And we know that the story was that man did eat of the tree and the curse came upon the world and so on and so forth. But we see that principle there, that the way God operates with man is he gives man a free choice to do what he, he will, he wants, in the boundaries that God has set. So God gives us a free choice, but then he says, these are your limits, and if you go beyond these limits, you're sinning, and it's wrong. And it's the same with any choice in life. You know, in life, we, we have free will choices to make. You know, we, we, have, we have decisions that we need to make or, you know, what we wear, where we live, what job we have, what, you know, our favorite colors, what car we drive, where we want to live, all these choices. And God does not dictate, you know, every part of your life. God gives you these free will choices to decide what you want to do. But in his word, he provides us with boundaries and limits that we should not cross. And that's what sin is. So God does not dictate every aspect of your life. So, you know, there's no need to um, get up in the morning and pray about what to what color to wear do you know what i mean like you, you know how silly would it be if if somebody had this mentality that god we have to find out god's will for every aspect of our life and they got up in the morning and they're praying to god and begging god and saying god what t-shirt do you want me to wear this morning no because it's 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 a choice that god gives to you you know, we know in the Bible that God says wear modest apparel, you know, and, 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 and dress modestly. So, and, and that, uh, I, I do believe, is a gray area, you know, and we use our conscience and there are different principles we can use to decide what is modesty. But if you have the option of two outfits that are both modest, are you going to pray to God and ask him to reveal which one to wear? Or are you going to make that decision? Well, you have to make that decision. God's not going to make that decision for you because he's given us those free will choices. So some things God does dictate, right? Because we have commandments in the Bible where God does dictate things. You know, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So, you know, God dictates things like going soul winning. But does he dictate the method in which we go soul winning? No, he doesn't, right? So there are different ways we can go soul winning. We, and we in this church, we go door knocking. We think that's the most effective. But, you know, there are other ways. You know, people do street preaching and people have talk radio and people have events and people build museums. People do all sorts of different things. There's all these different things you can do. God doesn't dictate how you preach the gospel, but God dictates that we do preach the gospel, right? So God does dictate certain things. And the things that God does dictate, you also don't need to pray about, right? You don't need to pray. Like It's like sometimes people will say to me, and maybe it's just uh, the way people... Uh, what is it? It's, it's just like a phrase that Christians use where they'll say, oh, we'll do something, but you know, Lord willing, we'll do that. 
But sometimes they'll apply that to soul winning, right? And they'll say, you know, Lord willing, you know, I'll be at soul winning on Saturday. Or Lord willing, I'll be at soul winning on Sunday. And, and what I usually say to that, I always say, well, he's always willing. It's just whether or not you want to go or not. You know, so we say, Lord willing, he'll be there. No, he's willing. He's willing that you go soul winning. It's just whether or not um, you're going to go. You're going to decide to actually um, take the decision and, and, and get to the soul winning time, come soul winning with us. So the, the reason why I say that, so, you know, while no doubt that who you marry is a much more important decision, the principle doesn't change. You know, God says, hey, whoever, you can marry whoever you want. And God does set boundaries, and I'll, I'll address that in, in next week's sermon. But as long as you're within the boundaries of God's will, what God wants, you have the free choice to marry who you want. So no doubt, who you marry is a more important decision. You know, it's a decision that affects your life much greater than the clothes you put on in the morning, uh, much greater than, you know, where you live, much greater than what job you decide to take. But nevertheless, no matter the importance of the decision, the principle is the same. You have a free will choice to make, and as long, you have to make it within the boundaries of God to make sure you're not making a sinful decision. 